Let me ask you a question, my boy. Who do you think reigns supreme in close quarters battle? Not rifle range combat, but down and dirty close quarters combat. Do you think it's the warriors of the tricky hive mind? They've got dangerously sharp claws, you know, and their legs are built for speed. You should see one sprint. It'll close 100 centimeters in a blink of an eye. Or maybe you think it's the Rillian Juggernauts. The Juggernauts' thick hide and tough chitin make them all but immune to the slashes and blows of even the finest of steels and their muscles strong enough to fold all but the stoutest races in half. Perhaps your mind wanders to the Crover Biotroops, whose venomous fangs are capable of dispatching any sapient in quick order. Their caustic spit acidic enough to turn even plasteel into a puddle, given enough time. It's got to be the Relians, right, Papa? Allow me to tell you a secret. It's none of them. You didn't expect to hear that, did you? I can see it in your face. The troops of three of the most decorated species on this side of the galaxy aren't the best at close quarters combat. At least one of them would be better than the others, right? Wrong. Take a look at what I said and try to see what they all have in common. Are you thinking back yet? I'll give you a moment. Ah... Uh... Done yet? What's the answer? I'm not sure, Papa. That's to be expected. You're used to being strong, aren't you? Very little on our planet could possibly hurt you. That's what we get for evolving into apex predators. And those warriors I was just talking about are an extension of the same. They're just the apex predators of apex predators. This ties into my point. They've evolved to be the most dangerous creatures. True death orders in all definitions of the word. All share the same traits, strength, resilience, more than adequate natural protections. They don't rely on anything but the most spartan of clothes because they don't need to. And yet, they can all be beaten and thrown aside like the hashings of a Cree bird by a little known species called humans. The humans? Didn't they recently just get admitted into the Alliance? The very same, my boy. <laughs> Aren't they weak? They look like they just came out of a garden world. How could they beat anyone? There's more to them than meets the eye. You are right, though. They are weak. Their skin is nothing compared to our hide and fur. You could probably cut right through it with your claws without even trying. And they've got no claws or nails. Their teeth aren't sharp of bite, and they've got no acid spit or venom to speak of. They're totally and utterly defenseless. And you know what they had to deal with on their planet? It's no garden world, let me tell you that. They had to survive with animals on their planet on par with the ones on ours. Well, that might not seem like very much. Do you remember that the smallest of us is at least a head taller than the largest of them? If they had to deal with animals like ours, how could they ever beat the others? They're better at close combat because of that very reason. They weren't ever the apex predators on their planet. Many of their dirt-side animals could very easily kill a human, and the same goes for their water dwellers. How do you suppose they overcame this, hmm? They used their heads. Without the claws of the tricky, they fashion their own. They're artificial blades made from bone and metal, cutting just as well as any natural claw. Without the hard hides and chitin of the Relians, they made their own armor from the animals they killed. Lacking the range of the Croven spit, they found their own way to kill from a distance, from simple throwing spears to bows, primitive firearms, all leading up to where they are now. Know that their greatest weapon isn't their fearsome claws, nor their impossibly tough exterior. No. Their greatest weapon, arguably the strongest one of all. Their ability to adapt and be creative. Their will to be flexible. They aren't bound by foolish honor to adhere to their innate, evolved advantages, nor are they shackled by their stubbornness. Their weakness is their strength. From what they lack, they grow stronger. They'll take everything that makes you strong, everything your species held proud about themselves. They'll take it, turn it around, and make it better than you could ever dream of. Surely they still wouldn't win against them, though, right? It just doesn't make sense. You can't kill a Relian with just claw and tooth alone. You still don't get it, do you? They don't only have tooth and claw. They develop weapons we've never bothered pursuing, thinking of nothing but mere trinkets. The ancient muskets our forefathers used abandoned by the wayside in favour of our speed and strength. They've taken it and made it better than we could have ever imagined. The legendary beasts we pride ourselves in training. The capability for fight and endurance we so seek, so that we may travel leagues without tiring. They made flying carriages of metal to do the same, not requiring the rest and food ours do. 
Dare I say, they'd be stronger than every species in the Alliance if you give them enough time. We may sit on our thrones of power, sharpening our claws and burying our teeth, but as we do, the humans slowly inch their way towards us, holding their wit and closing the distance until we ourselves look at their backs as they advance without us. So treat them well, as you would treat your packmates, as you would me, and remember what I've told you, for true strength lies in knowledge. Learn from them, so that you may grow stronger. Perhaps you might even change the world as we know it. Papa. But don't take me too seriously. I'm just an old fool, after all. No. You're right, Papa. I'll make you proud to be my father. <laughs> That's a good boy. I'm sure you'll make me proud. An excerpt from the autobiography of Emperor Rachel, the very same emperor to lead the Vrakian Empire to his second golden age.